and a very good morning to you. If you're superstitious, it's a bad day for you. It's Friday the 13th of September 2013. Chris Reardon with this morning's United Kingdom talk. Back after my holiday in Rome. Yes. Buongiorno. Ciao. Gracias. I now speak fluent Italian. At least three words, boys and girls. I'm so proud of myself, I've learned three words. I think my favourite one is buongiorno. It's very sounds Italian, doesn't it? Eh? Do you think? Welcome along, boys and girls. Um, there's an email address if you want to join in at any time. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk uh, If you're with us live, you can join in live. We have two methods, as well as the email, of course, two methods of joining in live. You can either Skype in with the Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N is my Skype uh, username. Just click on the, um, uh, uh, the uh, ad thing, OK? Ad thing. And uh, I'll happily add you, and then you can call in that way. Or, of course, by a uh, phone number. I have a local London number, 020-8133-6358. 020-8133-6358 is the uh, phone number. A few people with us already. Good morning to 3D Focus, who points out that it's your last Friday show. Yes, indeed, because after today, we're going to be moving to Saturday afternoons at 12 midday UK time. OK, a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the main one is that I keep having to go to the clinic at the moment for my feet. I've got bad feet. And I thought it would all, all be over in a couple of weeks, to be honest, but it's not. It's gone on and on a little bit more, and it's still not finished yet. So I'm going to have to go uh, again this afternoon, so I can only do, like, really a 45-minute show uh, this morning. And that's one of the reasons, because um, I don't know how much longer this is going to go on. Also, I find um, Fridays is a little bit of a rush, uh, because I am starting a new job tonight. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, so it's all a bit of a rush on Friday. So I thought... Um, uh, uh, I, I gave, I, I did a thing on Facebook and gave people free options. Either stay on Friday at 10.30, move to Saturday at um, midday, Monday at midday, or Tuesday morning at 1am. And uh, by far the majority of people said they preferred Saturday at 12 midday. So that's what we're going to do, uh, as probably actually as from tomorrow. I think we'll do one this week as well, just because uh, there's quite a few emails and loads to tell you about, and we're not all going to get, we're not, no way we're going to get this in in 45 minutes today. I'm telling you that now. So from tomorrow, the show moves to Saturday afternoons at 12 midday UK time. Also, that enables uh, American listeners to stay in bed a bit longer, because I think you were getting up at, is it... Oh, hang on a minute, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 4.30 in the morning, which is a bit much to ask. I know, <laughs> I know there are some real fans out there, uh, but to, to ask people to get up at 4.30 in the morning in another country is a little bit much, isn't it? So you can lay in until the very late hour of 6am. I mean, how kind am I? I've become a breakfast show. I've become a breakfast... Actually, all these people on in, in radio and all that sort of thing, um, they often... Uh, uh, want to um, do breakf the breakfast show on, on on radio the big show is the breakfast show okay you know like um, I don't know uh, if you were working for a company you would be like general manager well in, in the world of radio presentation the top show is the breakfast show and they all want to do that. That's one. Uh, that's the one. Certainly, where the big money is, if 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 you're led by money, which I'm not. But that that's where the big money is, and that's the big show, the breakfast show. I can't think of any worse show to do than a breakfast show. <laughs> to be honest, can you imagine getting up? I mean, what do they, what time do they start that lot on them? Capital and all that LBC. Is it six o'clock in the morning? The breakfast show start, or is it seven? I think it might be seven. Summer six, summer seven. You know, can you imagine, you know, if, you, if you're doing a live breakfast show at six in the morning, you'd have to get there at three in the morning. Oh, I don't think so, dear. No. No, I couldn't be. A, if, if I could have any show at all, I think I'd want the mid-morning one, you know, sort of ten till one or ten till two, something like that. Although, quite honestly, I don't think I'd managed for it. I'd peg out by the end of it. 
I would absolutely peg out by that. So good morning to um, uh, 3D Focus, who's already with us this morning. Morning, sir. Uh, good morning to Leon Corrigan, who I haven't heard from for a while. Good morning, Leon. He's with us this morning. Morning, Leon. Uh, Richard. Good morning, Richard. Mr. Lerichia. Bonsoir, Mr. Lerichia. Come on, There we are. Look, look at me. Slipping into another person, another language then. Did you see that? I am multicultural and multi-sexual and everything. I do everything. If there's anything that you, in your mind, you think I should be doing, then I probably have done it, which is a bit of a worry, really. It is. Good morning, Richard, um, who's uh, there with, is eating popcorn. At 25 to 11 on a Friday morning, he's eating popcorn. That's a bit much, that is. I mean, there's another reason for moving, uh, moving to, um, uh, to midday. You will be able to have popcorn and ice creams while you're listening or watching or both. All right. Uh, good morning to uh, John. John, who's with us this morning? And he enjoys the little warm-up music that we play for about half an hour, doesn't he? Hey, morning, John. And uh, good morning to Terry H, who says, Oh, it was me. Who was you? Terry, who was you? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Who was you? Do, 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 do enthrall us with what you mean by that, OK? Good morning, Terry. And John's been looking at pictures of um, Cristiano Ronaldo this morning. Uh, because he he does think he's in with some sort of chance. There's no chance at all of you getting older, older Cristiano Ronaldo, John. Uh, because, you know, he has shown interest in me. I'm pretty sure I am the way that he wants to go. OK, so 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 no, no point in bothering there at all. All right. OK, so if you're with us live, just coming up to 20 to 11 on Friday the 13th of September... If that's the time where you are now, then you are with us live. If it's any other time, that's UK time, OK? Uh, if it's any other time, you're watching a recording. If you want to join in, don't forget the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Whether you're live or recorded, you can, uh, uh, recordings, you can watch, uh, uh, you can use that one. Or if you're with us live, use the Skype, Chris Reardon, all one word, Chris Reardon on the Skype, or the phone, 020 8133 Or Merlin! Merlin's with us as well this morning. And Merlin, <coughs> I do believe, <coughs> I do believe it was your birthday a couple of days ago. Would you like me to sing for your little happy birthday? I like to do happy birthdays for people. I do. You know, I like to make people feel a little bit special. I heard that you're a bit special. Is that right, Merlin? Are you like a special... <laughs> Are you a special person? Here we go. Here we go. Especially for Merlin, then. I'm now going to sing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear Merlin. Happy Birthday to you. There we are. I've just got a sound come, a, a little thing come up on the screen. It says, it sounds like you're typing, so we've muted your microphone. I wonder what that means. <laughs> oh, can you still hear me okay? I don't know what that means. Can you still hear me okay? I don't know. Um, Terry H says, sorry, I thought you was offline, but it was me. Ronaldo is mine, he says. Oh, he sends me a little little picture here of Cristiano. Oh, oh. Oh, I wish I could show that to you, boys and girls. That's a little bit too much for this time of the morning. <gasps> there he is, working out in his new little white pants. What a wonderful picture that is, isn't it, eh? Oh, oh I've come over all hot now. Terry, stop it. Not at this time in the morning. You know I've got a bad heart, dear. <laughs> you don't want me to have a heart attack while we're on air, surely. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> I'll save that one for later. <laughs> when I'm in private. And John says um, that I'm a nutter. I don't think so. Do you think I'm a nutter? And Merlin's pleased with the happy birthday thing. That's all right, Merlin. I could make a little little business of that, I think. Singing people various happy birthday messages. Good night. Right, uh, let's have a look. A couple of messages coming in here, and then I'll tell you about my uh, holiday. There we are. There he is, little Leon Coll Corrigan saying good morning. Hope you're how's, your, how's your babies? Is it one baby or several babies you've got? I can't remember. You're like rabbits, you two, him and his bird. Honestly, 
knocking them out left, right and centre, aren't you? Just like my nephew and his wife. Oh, dear. Babies everywhere. We like babies. We like babies. Anyway, so I've had a nice time uh, in uh, Italy. Uh, got to... Uh, I, I did work. I worked last uh, Thursday night. Not yesterday, the Thursday before. And um, it was all very nice. Oh, just a minute. I'm missing a piece of paper here. <gasps> oh, no. Where's my other bit of paper gone? Is this it? Monday, Tuesday. Oh, there it is. No, it's here. Is it here? Yes, it is. It's here. So I worked... Uh, by the way, I've cut my hair. Very, very short this time. It's a number zero. More about that later. So uh, we, uh, I worked on the Thursday night. Friday morning came. And for the first time, really, in... Oh, God knows how long. I felt very unanxious about, about the journey. I don't know why. Very strange, really. I wasn't anxious at all. So Friday morning came and um, left the house. Ron came over, left the house about about quarter to ten in the morning. I think it was about ten, ten, fifteen, something like that. Went to the airport, whisked through the check-in, whisked through the uh, um, uh, security thing. Didn't get pulled over this time, which, which is, makes a change. Usually they drag me over and take, start, me to, start telling me to take my shoes off and all this business and pat me down, which is always a pleasant experience, to be honest. We don't mind being patted down, especially if it's for nothing. You know. I mean, I think, to be honest, I think I'm getting to the age now where I'm going to have to start paying to be patted down even. I, I mean, I asked. I did ask. I went through this beep, beep, beep thing. And they said, no, carry on, sir. And I'm like, would you like to pat me down? He said, no, it's OK, carry on, sir. Well, please pat me down. And I put my arms up, but no, no interest at all. No interest at all. Very disappointing. Went straight through, looked at all the overpriced stuff in the duty free. I don't know why people buy that stuff in there. Great big bloody Toblerones. Aren't they vile? Th always vile. Vile Toblerones. Don't like those at all. Do you like Toblerones? Oof. No, thank you. So I went through there. Um... Uh, spent a couple of hours, I think we were two hours in the lounge in the end, and we were at that time where breakfast is finishing and lunch is starting, so we were able to have two meals within the space of an hour and a half. How marvellous is that? They had porridge. I had a nice bowl of porridge, and uh, this is in the BA lounge, nice bowl of porridge, and then we had a little, we did have a little walk around the shops, nothing I fancied at all. I must say the Dixons in Heathrow Airport is just... I, I, there's just nothing in there that I, that that you want, really. I, I don't know why. It's all a bit higgledy piggledy in there. You know, it's not tidy. It's not like a tidy shop. Very disappointing. Um, there's a, the regular clothes shop and designer label places and sunglass. What is it? Sun sun hut sunglass hut. Is it sunglass hut? I never ever go in there, and I'll tell you why. Once I bought some sunglasses from there. And I can't remember why, but I never wore them. And I took them back. I said, well, look, I haven't worn these. Um, can I change them for something else? Then he got this little eyepiece out and he started examining the, the, the sunglasses. And he said, no, we can't take There's a small scratch. I said, well, it can't be. I haven't worn them. And um, he said, yeah, you look in there and you look at, well, it must have been like that. Well, we can't take them back. So I, know, I don't buy anything in there now. Oh, yes. Once, once I'm annoyed buy a company. I never buy anything from them again. Philips. Did I tell you the Philips story? Years ago. I was a, just a little boy, about nine, ten, eleven, something like that. No, what was it? Fifteen, about fifteen. And uh, I bought this cassette recorder, Philips cassette recorder, and it went wrong. And I sent it back with the adapter, and it came back without the adapter. And it was so much my dad would backwards and forwards, you know, um, uh, trying to get this adapter we got it back in the end but it was so much hassle and i never ever have bought another philips product again i don't give them a second chance no sodom keep your stuff if you can't do good customer services i had the same with the telephone company three you know three the network three dreadful oh the worst customer services ever was from three i thought so i bought two phones oh my god whenever they started Years ago. Bad customer services have never bought anything for it. And they ring, they ring up. They send little letters. Please come back. No, thank you. 
no, you've upset me. That's the end of it. I'm not very forgiving, am I? It's not very Catholic. You'd think I was a little bit more forgiving being a Catholic, wouldn't you? Anyway, so back to the thing. So we had, uh, I had the porridge, and then we had a little walk around the shops, and we came back up and had lunch. About 45 minutes later. Because <laughs> the plane was delayed about 20 minutes, not too bad. So we had lunch, can't remember what I had. Um, and uh, then we got on the plane, very comfortable. And, uh, oh, while we're in, Ron seems to know all these celebrity-type people, and apparently there were two celebrities in the lounge with us. There was... Um, uh, some uh, uh, model. He said she's a famous model. I, mean, I don't know what these people look like. I, I really don't know celebrities. I don't. So apparently there was a model and also a, a big rapper, you know, big, big black guy, rapper. And I said, well, who was it? He says, I don't know, but he must have been because there was all these people fuffing around him. Do you know what I mean? Hangers on, we're called. Oh, oh, yes, sir. No, sir. Oh, I couldn't bear that. You know, if I had all the money in the world and I was rich and famous and all that business, right, I would not want hundreds of people faffing around me all the time. Oh, do you want this? Do you want that? No, let me get on with it. Go away. Go away. Couldn't have any of that, I'm afraid. Although I could tell you, I could have someone to deal with my paperwork. Look at this bloody room at the moment. It's all... Oh, my God. Just a minute. All the Barry Manilow police force will be out... Angry if I don't immediately. I've still got the August picture up of Barry, haven't I? I'm on it. Oh no, hang on, the nails come out of the wall now. <laughs> there's, there's nothing screwed on in here, dear. It's all nails and sellotape. Oh yeah, the new Barry picture for um, September in his black jacket because that has to be changed. I can't believe. Oh, hang on, the nail. The nail's gone into the wall now. Oh god, a minute. Get this on there. There we are. Oh, Christ. One minute. One minute. Now my sign's come down. <clears throat> it's all... It really is all... Hang on. Hang on. Is that it? Is that straight? Does it matter if it's a bit bent? Sorry? What do you mean, bent? Sorry? There we are. The new Barry Manilow picture for this week, uh, for this month, in a black jacket. So, got off, uh, had a nice couple of meals on the plane, and you're only on the plane for about two hours, and two and a half hours, something like that. Very pleasant, short flight, no films or anything like that, you just have to sit there, and all I had to do was talk to my best mate Ron for a couple of hours. God, and that was boring, let me tell you that. Honestly, it was going on and on and on, eventually I just quietly put my headphones on and listened to a bit of Barry on the, uh, on the headphones as I was travelling. Have I cut myself shaving this morning? I think I have. A little cut, shaven. See, I do try and prepare myself for you first thing in the morning. Got off the plane at the other end, coming through the uh, uh, Rome uh, airport, went through customs, and uh, as, uh, as me and Ron travelled, uh, two, two security guards jumped out at us. They appeared. They appeared in a puff of smoke in front of me. Excuse me, sir, in a foreign language. I think that's what he said anyway. Yes? Oh, do you want to search our bags? OK. I put them down. Oh, uh, OK, sir. No, um, uh, one will do. Oh, OK. Well, which one do you want? So he says, he's looking at these four cases. Oh, um, um, and he, pick, he just picked one up and then looked at me. Picked it up and I said, OK, um, would you want to, would you want me to open that? And he looked at me and he said, no, that's OK. Put it down. Off you go. And that was it. Didn't even open the cases. I think, I think sometimes... Um, they must just do that to see the expression on your face. You know, you picked up a case and if you've got something dodgy in there, <gasps> please don't open that case. Oh my God, please don't open that case. Because we're not drug dealers or arms smugglers or, 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 or illegal people traffickers. We're not anything like that. We are simply tourists who have come to see the sights of Rome. So they let us go through. And that was the end of that. Didn't hear any more of that. Um... Yes, uh, thank you, Terry. Terry reminds me, you forgot to change your calendar. We're two weeks into September. It has now been changed, Terry. Worry not. Can I just put a little caption up? Just a moment. Add effects. Where's that gone there? Text over video. And does that work? Has that worked? So a little, little bit of text. There we are. There we are. Oh, incidentally, um, if you're watching the live video only, uh, I found a HD button this morning on the... Um, live things. So, um, 
does it look any different to you or does it just look the same? I'm always a bit wary of, of HD video. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> let's, let's face it, you know, some people are a little bit old to have HD video, don't you think? I being one of them. So a little bit, I, I did hit, hit the HD button today and I don't know if it's made any difference or not. Um, so we got a, a cab. It was, uh, this was the first time I've ever been done. So we got this cab. Now, Ron just wants to get there. He wants to do things, do things, do things, do things. And this, this man appeared in a suit. Oh, you're looking for transportation? And he, he's run straight over to him without investigating all the other options. And um, he said, yeah, yeah. He said, OK, uh, my friend will take you. How much? Uh, 65 euros, which sounded a bit bloody dear to me. That's like 60 quid. And uh, uh, Ron looked at me, he says, is, is that sound all right? And I thought, no. And I thought, oh, keep the peace, just go along with it. Do you know what I mean? Um, so uh, we got in the car, and it was a light, nice, really nice car. I think it was a Mercedes or something like that, I can't remember. It was a really nice car. Um, but uh, uh, we got in that, and they delivered us uh, to the hotel. When we got to the hotel, we realised there was a set fee from the airport of €48, Euros, which is still 48 quid. It's a hell of a lot of money for a car journey, isn't it, really? Um, and when you think about it, it was only, like, 20 quid less than... Uh, it was only 48, 58, 59, 6... It was, only like tw it was 20 quid more the way we did it. But there we are. So we got done there, but, you know... One of those things, I'm afraid. I would, you see, I would have walked up and down. I'm quite happy going around in those little shuttle buses. It doesn't bother me. Ron is a little bit, eh, 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 oh, I'm not getting on public transport. He's one of those. Oh, he is. Terrible. I'm quite happy. And whenever I go to Sydney or um, Australia or when I've been to America, I get on the shuttle bus. Shuttle bus is like a little bus. Um, and they they squeeze as many people on as they can, so you can you can be right up against someone. I mean, there might be no. I haven't had a nice one yet, and you, you know you kind of slip slip on next to a, a a nice lad next to you or something like that. And your hand might slip down. <laughs> no, stop it now. Stop it. This is a family show. Um, so I'm quite happy doing that. And usually, probably from Rome, that would have cost about twenty quid. But no, he has to have the card, and he. Oh God. Anyway, so we got to the hotel. Very, very impressed with the hotel. Uh, the uh, hotel was called, the, you can have a look if you want, the Donna Camilla Savelli. That's D-O-N-N-A-C-A-M-I-L-L-A-S-A-V-E-L-L-I. Okay, the Donna Camilla Savelli Hotel. Beautiful hotel. It's nice without being... Over the top. Do, do you know what I mean? It's fairly plain. Now, this hotel is a converted uh, converted convent. And it's really, really nice. A converted convent. So, years and years ago, uh, it would, be, would have been full of nuns doing prayers and all that business. It's a beautiful hotel. Beautiful pictures of uh, all religious things and all that. Re really, really nice hotel. So, we were impressed with that. Got into the room and there were there were two beds. There was a very very large. I've never seen a bed as big as this one. A massive massive double bed, bigger than a king. Bigger than I've, what have I got? I think I've got the next up from a double bed. Just in case anyone's thinking of coming round at any point, you know. Just a, I think it's a king queen or king. I think it's a king size bed I've got. And. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what this one was. It looked bigger even than a queen. It was massive, this bed. And in the corner, there was a little single bed. And I says, um, which, which bed do you want, Ron? And he says, oh, I don't mind, thinking I'm going <laughs> to... Thinking I'm going to say, oh, um, you know, you have the double bed. I said, all right, then, I'll, I'll go on this one, then. And he, he, look, he said, um, oh, can we swap after two days? And I thought, oh, yeah, if you want to. And then I thought, he won't remember. You know, I thought you won't remember that. So I grabbed the double bed as quickly as possible. <laughs> and we put our stuff down. And we had a shower. And it was about... I think it was about... I think it was about 8 o'clock now. 7 or 8 o'clock. Something like that. And we went for a little walk. We had a walk round. And we had something to eat. And we found this alley where there is um, restaurants both sides. 
just just a little abbey, and the 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 street was all cobblestones. I mean, let, tell, let ladies, if you ever walk down there in high heeled shoes, you'd be all over the place. I mean, you really would. These little cobbles, and it wasn't smooth. It, it seemed that they didn't really worry too much about holes in roads and things like that. Okay, so they was the roads. So we walked, had a little walk around, and then we found this little. As I say, this little alley with restaurants all down either sides. <clears throat> the cobbles in the middle. And, of course, tables outside. And it was lovely and warm. It was a really nice, warm evening. Um, so we had... Uh, I, I think, basically, we, we ate... We were only there for four nights. And we ate every night in either one restaurant on one side or one on the other. There, there were, like, you know, two that were opposite each other. Both good foods. Um, both... Um, very nice, and they seemed to just cook everything as you wanted. I generally had um, I had pizza, of course. <laughs> um, I had uh, pasta with tomato stuff and ar arabella or something like that. I can't remember, which was very spicy, like tomato sauce. And uh, they, oh, this one did a gorgeous vegetable soup. Really nice vegetable soup. The only thing is it always took like 20 minutes to come because they didn't, didn't come out of a can. You know when you go in these bloody pubs in this country, you want, oh, I'll have tomato soup, please. And you know it's come out of a can, don't you? No. This vegetable soup had just been made because it had big, thick bits of carrots and um, broccoli. What else was in it? And potato was in there. It was absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. And I had a can of Coke. He had a bottle of water. Um, and we never, we never paid more than... 24 euros, which is about, about 23, 22 pounds for, for both of us. And we thought that was really good. What we did, we had a quick skim around the area. Um, and it was very, these roads were very, very busy with people. A lot of people out. This would have been a Friday night, you see. Friday, Saturday, Sunday was a bit quieter. Monday was quieter still. But certainly the Friday and the Saturday, these little roads were full of people milling about. You know, either drinking or eating or whatever. So we looked for the ones that had the most Italian people in them. We avoided the ones that there were a couple that were empty. And I think there's always a reason somewhere's empty. You know, maybe it's not particularly good in there. So we didn't go in those. So, so these ones were very busy and we ate in there every night. I'm very pleased. We never paid more than 20, 23, 24 pounds for both meals at all. It's not bad, is it? And uh, eventually, of course, the staff get to know you and all that, and it's nice. The only thing is, in one of them, there was a young waiter who was of Asian appearance. Uh, when I say Asian, I mean uh, Indian-Pakistani uh, appearance. I, I say that because in, in Australia, Asian people are not classed as Indian or Pakistani. They're classed more as Japanese or Chinese that's what they class. There is a difference in, 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 in what Asian people are referred to in Australia and what they are here. So this was an Indian-Pakistani type appearance. And he was kind of doing the drinks, I think, and collecting the glasses. Um, the manager was very pleasant to us, you know, a, a typical old uh, Italian man, about 40, 45 but he spoke to the, the waiter like dirt, and I didn't really like that. I thought the waiter was being spoken to and, and treated badly. I, I, I got that impression, which is very sad, really. And, I, I, you know, I, I, I do notice that sort of thing. And I, I did wonder if he was being treated badly, sort of behind the scenes, whether he got a whack round the head now and again, or and indeed if he's stuck in that job. Maybe he can't get out of that job for whatever reason. He desperately needs that job to live. Maybe he's on a really low wage. But when, whenever this waiter came over to us, he was very pleasant, always smiled. But whenever the manager spoke to him, he was like, um, you, you could see the worry in his face. I mean, of course, I didn't say anything at the time. Maybe I should have done. I don't know. Um, but I, I thought that was very sad. So... Um, the food was nice. Um, lots of bikes. Hundreds and hundreds of scooters everywhere. 
<clears throat> you know when you see those films and it's always Italians and there's scooters everywhere. It's just it it really is just like that. Hundreds and hundreds of scooters everywhere. And cars. Now I told you these alleys, restaurants either side, tables there as well, and it's quite narrow. But that don't stop cars coming down there. Oh no. <laughs> and we, we we I found it was really odd that cars were gently coming down this cobbled street. But there seemed to be a different culture of driving there, where the car was respectful of people in front, and the people in front would move out of the way when a car was coming. Which is not like that at all here. I think the driving in this country has gone really quite badly downhill. Similarly, on the main roads, the zebra crossings, what look like zebra crossings, I don't know what they call them there. Um, if you wait at the side of the road at the zebra crossing, the cars do not stop. You have to take control of the zebra crossing. We worked this out after a while. The cars, if you wait there, the cars won't stop. You'll be waiting there forever. The cars do not stop. What you've got to do is step out onto the zebra crossing and start walking. And then the cars stop. That's how it seems to work. Obviously, if there's a car coming, tearing towards you. You don't step out. So I think there's a little bit of um, intelligence on both sides there about crossing the road. A different way of crossing the roads. OK, so that's it. The cars also <laughs> don't that the, they don't seem people don't seem to be bothered about having dents or bumps in the car. There are so many cars with dents, bumpers missing. We saw one car. This, the bumper was held on with uh, those cable tire things. People just didn't seem to worry about having density. I'm the same myself, actually. Uh, this particular car, I don't have a dent in it at the moment. But um, uh, if, if it was, then I probably wouldn't have it done. Certainly my last uh, car, my Toy uh, Toyota Igo, had a few little dents inside. It doesn't bother me. Not bother me at all. You know, especially not with a price. I mean, the reason I started doing that was uh, I, got, I got one dent about six years ago in the car. I took it in. I said, how much to have that fixed? It wasn't a particularly big dent. £800 they wanted. 800, I said, no, nah, forget it, mate. He said, you're not having it done then? I said, no, I'm not. I said, will it go any faster? Will it last any longer? Why would I pay you £800 to have a little dent pulled out? No, leave it. Forget it. It doesn't bother me. And that did send, seem to be the general um, opinion of the Italians. Cars full of dents. I mean, some of them would look at the right state. But they were working, you know. No problem at all with that. So that's good. I thought that was a good thing. Some lovely cars there, but an awful lot of smart cars. There seem to be many, many, many more smart cars than anything else. Loads of little smart cars, which, of course, were perfect for going down these little streets where the restaurants were. Um, so that's the cars. Uh, the young people there. Now, where the... Restaurants were, were also lots of bars. There were lots and lots of young people. Girls and boys, a lot of the boys with the bikes, as I say, rows and rows of these scooters everywhere. Rows of them, they just park and, and that's it. Doesn't seem to be too, many pro too much problems with parking and that sort of thing in Rome. They literally just got off their bike and went and did what they had to do. There was no money going in metres or anything like that, but rows and rows of these bikes. We had... At dinner, as I say, most nights about eight, nine, ten o'clock was one particular late night. And then after dinner, we, we would go for a walk. Um, a couple of times we got lost and I, I'm just no good getting lost. I, I'm just, I, I hate getting lost. I really hate getting lost. I start panicking. I know it sounds stupid. I start panicking that I'm never, ever going to be able to find my way home again. That's why I, 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 I could never go to China or somewhere like that. I mean, how on earth would you find your way home if you got lost in, 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 in Beijing or somewhere like that? It's peaking. No, it's not peaking, is it? It's Beijing. I would just... Oh, it's terrible. A couple of times we got lost and I'm all sort of in pieces, really. 
I, I really and Rome is easy to get lost the map is just oh Christ I mean it's all over the place not so bad in New York because everything's in a straight line you know and your first street second street third street I mean it's easy it's quite easy so if you're going one way you're like, right I've got to go down to you know 7th street and you're on 6th street if you go a block and you get to 8th you know you're going the wrong way you know but we got lost a few times there and I, I just hated it I hated it but the young people, so we'd go out for a walk and then we'd come back again, say, two or three hours later, and walk back through these same bars and restaurants. And all the young people had been drinking all night long. One thing I noticed, when we came back to the hotel room and had to walk through these people at two in the morning, there was no fighting or shouting or people being sick all over the place. They were merry. There was no bad behaving. And the women, the girls and the women, dressed respectfully, if you see what I mean. I don't think I saw anyone in a tiny short skirt with your ass hanging out. Or great low tops down here. Five inches of makeup and bits of metal hanging out everywhere. No. The women were very, very different. They dressed respectfully. And it, it is a very different culture. If you come out to London on a Saturday night, you're bound to bump into a fight at some point. Or trip over someone being sick in the street at two in the morning. Or urinating against a wall somewhere. And I'm afraid the young ladies, they'll be out there with the lads as well. Just as drunk. Messy. And it is a very, very different culture. They were having a good time. They just did it calmly, respectfully. And then another thing, police would occasionally walk through and there was a respect for the police. No one was taunting the police, probably because they had guns, <laughs> you know. No one was taunting the police or shouting abuse at them or anything like that. They were just walking through. And I felt completely and utterly safe there. Absolutely safe. I am where the political side of things come. I'm very anti-European. I don't like this whole European Union business. But I do like people. We talk to a few Italian people about the whole European thing, and as always, uh, whenever I've spoke to people of other um, uh, countries... They almost always say that we don't like the European Union. We want our own currency. We want our identity kept. And it was the same in Italy again. You know, they actually don't like this whole European Union thing. It's not the people that want all this. It's the bloody politicians all the time, isn't it? You know. But perhaps that's another subject to talk about on another day. Anyway, so... Um, that was very nice. Um, on the Saturday morning, we got up, come downstairs. I thought, well, let's have a walk to the Vatican. We want to go to the Vatican and see where it is because I wanted to go to Mass on Sunday morning, you see. So out we went, walked along the river. Very easy to find the Vatican from that hotel. Did you have a look at it, by the way? Have a, have a little look at the hotel. Get some pictures up. What is it again? The Donna Camilla Savelli. D-O-N-N-A-C-A-M-I-L-L-A-S-A-V-E-L-L-I. -L 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 I've got no complaints at all about that beautiful hotel. I mean, it really was nice. Come out to the Vatican. And um, on the way to Vatican, of course, lots of souvenir shops. 
So we went in the first one, and we found very expensive. And it was weird, because as you got towards the Vatican, the shops seemed to become more expensive. Uh, Ronnie wanted to buy someone a rosary. And I think in the first shop, there was like 30 or 40 euros. And the second one, there were 30. Next one, there were 20. Eventually, we found, you, we found rosaries for like 5 euros, which is a fiver. <laughs> So there, there's a lesson to be learnt there. Don't buy the ones until you get really close to the Vatican. And there's, there's a shop right on the corner, which was the best one. There's got loads of stuff in there. And uh, Ron, Ron was conned. Ronnie was conned by an old lady. So there's this old lady literally laying on the floor on her front with one arm that a cup holding out for people to put money in. Now, I thought, and, and it was very hot, very, very hot. This woman is done up in all the clothes. She's got a coat on, she's got stockings on, uh, everything. She's got everything on, a hat, a scarf, and one arm was bandaged. It looked like she, she, she only had one arm. Um, <clears throat> but I, I wasn't taken in by this at all. He's come out of the shop and gone straight over and put a couple of euros in her cup. And she said, oh, gracia, gracia, like that. And we walked off and I, I looked at him and I said, are you sure? He said, what? I said, why did you put money to her? He said, oh, I felt sorry for her. I said, listen, Ron, there's nothing wrong with her, mate. He said, well, there must be. How could she? Because she really was laid out in the middle of the road. Not the main road. There's like, like a, well, I say a road, uh, the pavement. So it was laid out on the pavement, on the floor. Anyway, as the day went on, we saw lots of other old ladies dressed in exactly the same clothes. And I suddenly remembered, of course, they're the Romanian gypsies. We've got them here in Bloody Eyed Park. Do not give money to them. They're all loaded. They've got great big houses back in Romania. And how do you think they pay for the houses? They come over here and take the money. Do not give them money, boys and girls. It's a professional thing. Professional beggars. That's what they are. And then we spotted a lady with a wobbly stick. And people were coming by and this stick, she, she'd be standing, she'd be standing, she'd be standing with a stick and it would be wobbling like that. Wobbling in front of her. <clears throat> and Ron looked at me, I said, no, don't. Because I think it was going to go over and give her some money as well. Carried on, more women, some with a couple, with a baby under the arm, you know, some with a dog with three legs, you know, the sort of thing. They're all out there, just outside the Vatican. A little bit later on... Oh, so, so we, we, did, we didn't actually go in the Vatican, we just walked outside to see where it was. Then we went for another walk and got lost again, and I was doing my nutting by now, because I, I just hate getting lost all the time. So we stopped and had an ice cream and a cup of tea somewhere, and I felt a bit better after that. Um, and then we saw... One of the ladies with the wobbly sticks. Walking. With a stick under her arm. Quite rapidly. Towards the river. And I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> and then we saw another one. And we watched her. We stood at the top of these stairs. And we watched the lady with the wobbly stick. And... While there was no one around, she kind of had a, her hand on, a, on her hip. And the moment she saw a tourist come in, she'd pick up the stick, put it down in front of her and start wobbling it again, like that. <laughs> Bloody old frauds they are, honestly. I mean, good luck to them. If they can get away with it, then fine, you know. They won't get a penny out of me, though. <laughs> Mind you, no one generally gets a penny out of me, to be honest. So that was, uh, that was day one. Also attached to the hotel was a chapel. And in Rome, you have never seen so many churches in all your life. There are hundreds of churches, all with bells, 
Oh, it's the most marvellous sound to hear these bells going off. Beautiful, beautiful sound, listening to, to, to the bells of the churches going off all the time. So that was nice. The church, the little chapel attached the hotel, uh, to the hotel, because of course it was a, uh, it's a converted convent. That, um, we were walking past that on the way out that morning, and I could hear someone singing and, and playing the organ, but one note, you know. And we looked in, and there's a little old nun sitting at the organ, trying to learn a song called Parnas Angelicus. I don't know if you know it. Da 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 and she was trying to learn this obviously and I know that I know it you see so I stood there and I thought I'm gonna go in it I I just walked in I said hello and she said ciao I said oh English you speak it no I said oh I know this song. I said, and you know, I managed to get her to start playing it, and I then went to the left of her and played the bass part of it, and that was that was a lovely experience. That was, she was about sixty, sixty-five, seventy years old. Lovely little old nun. I couldn't understand what she was saying, but when you get talking to them, you do pick up the odd word, like she was saying, "Ah, oh, did a Catholic lue?" I heard Catholic in there. I said, "Yes." Ah, and then immediately she told me that mass was at seven o'clock in the morning. I thought, oh Christ, seven o'clock in the morning, dear. <gasps> I don't think I've seen that time for years. So that was a bit early for me. But that, that was a lovely experience to just go in there and, and, and just play on on the, um, her playing the, the top part of it with one finger. And I, I joined in at the bottom there. So that, that was really nice. That was really nice. Um... So, Sunday, oh, do you know what? It's quarter past 11. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go. I, I hate doing this. This won't happen anymore uh, after we move the show to Saturday, all right? I'm going to have to go now because I've got to go to the foot clinic again, haven't I? Now, from this week, indeed tomorrow, we're going to do it tomorrow, the show moves from Friday morning to Saturday afternoons at 12 midday, okay? So the first one of those will be tomorrow. So that's tomorrow, uh, Saturday the 14th of September 2013. Join us live here, okay? If you're thinking, oh, well, where do I go? Simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Look at the top there and it will tell you exactly where to find us and at what time if you want to be with us live. If you can't be with us live, doesn't matter because you can watch and listen to the recording as well. All right. Uh, just a couple of uh, uh, messages come in. Uh, Terry H says the HD is very good, very clear picture and sound better. Oh, great. So there's, this works, does it? Fantastic, Terry. Well, I'm pleased to hear that. Thank you, Terry, for that. Appreciate that. And... Um, Merlin wants to know if I've got my tickets for Manolo yet. No, I haven't. But I have got the invoice. Where's that? It's here, actually, I think. I have got the, well, two invoices, actually. Or th th three, actually, three, three invoices here. Um, because I've bought a few tickets... But I'll tell you about that tomorrow, OK? When I come back tomorrow, I'll tell you what, what's, what's been going on with the uh, Barry Manilow tickets. Um, I have a whole stack of emails here, which I'll read tomorrow. And uh, once we've gone to Saturday, then, then there's no time limit. I won't have to rush around like that, OK? So I'll continue my little holiday thing. What did we get to? So we've got to go to Sunday, haven't we? And I'll tell you what I was doing Sunday, Monday and all that. I'll continue that tomorrow afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time, or if you're watching recording, in the next show. All right, email address. Feel free to send an email in about today's show or anything else. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Oh, and Marge, I did get an email from you, Marge. Don't worry, that email that you wasn't sure got to me did in fact get to me, and I'll read it out tomorrow with the rest of them. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Dot co dot uk is the email address. Um, also, uh, tonight I am starting a new job, boys and girls. Uh, I've left the place in Ealing now. Um, and the reason I left the place in Ealing 
uh, there was no problem at all. Got on with managers, got on with staff, customers. It was a nice little night, the one in Ealing. Uh, no rise for four years. You expect to get a little bit of money, you know, now and again, just to sort of a thank you. No rise for four years, so uh, I looked around and found something else. And I'm actually going back um, to the Black Cap in Camden High Street, which really is is where I started. I, I was there for 18 years. Believe it or not, I was DJ in this place for 18 years. I left in 2007. And I'm going back there tonight. So, fingers crossed on that. I hope it'll work out all right. Um, it's a place that holds many happy memories for me. You know, to be in a venue for so long. I left in 2007. Because um, it was time to, to go, really. And... I've been looking around to replace the Friday one for a while. Um, just, 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 you know, uh, because of that's the only reason was I, I felt, no, you know, you deserve a little bit, little bit of money now and again. If they won't pay it, then you have to go somewhere else. And, and I've managed to do that. So uh, I'm quite pleased about that. So I'm quite excited about tonight. I've no idea what it's like. I gather it's a bit quiet at the moment on Friday nights, which also gives me a bit of a, um, a challenge. I do like a bit of a challenge, you know, maybe maybe um, I can do something with it and fingers crossed. So if you're anywhere, I'm now at the Black Cap every, I say every Friday night, one, one a month I'm not there. They have a, a girls night on once a month. So um, if you're ever around the Black Cap, Camden Town, Friday night, oh, what happened there? Just a second. What's the phone number in Hobby Radio? You can't ring now, Ron. I'm sorry, I've got to go. I've got to go and get ready, dear. You can ring tomorrow afternoon if you want, but you won't be up to about 2 o'clock tomorrow, will it? I think Ron, Ronnie's just uh, sent us a message to say what, what's the phone number to call in. I'm afraid you can't call in now because I'm finished. And that's it. Too late again. You have missed the boat, dear. You have absolutely missed the boat. There we are. So, fingers crossed it'll be all right tonight. The Black Cap, Camden Town, 10 p.m. till 3 a.m. Very excited about that. And I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning at uh, tomorrow afternoon, Saturday afternoon, and indeed every Saturday afternoon from this week at 12 midday. You have a lovely Friday now, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.